think that we should do here? Try to unmute. Yeah? Please speak. Can you hear me now? Very good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank good. you. Very good. Okay. Go ahead, Ming. Okay, thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, so dear friends, yeah. so hello, I'm Mima from Qihua University, and, uh, and I'm honored to give a talk online. And I noticed that I'm the uh, very first one online talk for this workshop, very lucky, yes. and can be as a testing person. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, organizers for the very kind invitation. And uh, all the contents I'm going to uh, talk today haven't been published. So and also I noticed that I'm, I'm the last one, the one before lunch. So I'll try to make it quick and sorry for the delay. So let's start. So the title of my talk is, uh, is about friction between liquid and solid. And uh, it's titled as uh, translucency and the temperature dependence uh, for the Sleep lungs of water on supported graphene so, and FTTS. Sorry to interrupt this, you. This we, we, we could not see your uh, presentation, actually. We can. Uh, sorry, which one? OK, yeah, yeah. Can you see me now? Yeah. Can you see the presentation? Yeah. yeah. I'm sharing my screen, can you see it? So I can continue, right? Uh, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, okay. So, uh, so first, for those, those of you uh, who is not familiar with uh, this one, so I'm, uh, I'll, I will give a very short uh, introduction about the sleep lungs. So as shown in this figure, so this figure is uh, a, a schematic when the, for the velocity profile, when the liquid is slightly on a solid surface, and it shows three typical states, no sleep, partial sleep, and a perfect sleep. So when we talk about uh, the partial sleep, it means that the velocity of the liquid next to a solid, solid surface does not equal to the velocity of the solid. And this is termed as a, a, a sleep. And in fact, about 200 years ago, Niebuhr already gave a definition of this sleep loss for Newtonian equations. Because we are talking about the uh, frictions, and uh, the relation between sleep and friction is very straightforward. If we just think about this force balance between the uh, friction between solid and surface and the friction within the liquid. And then we found that, the, and, and we can easily find that the, uh, liquid, uh, the, slip, uh, the slip loss uh, is uh, uh, equal to the ratio between the liquid, uh, liquid viscosity and the friction coefficient. So that is to say that the slip loss quantitatively describes the friction at the solid liquid interface. And because we are using the continuum mechanics, and first of all, we need to know the applicable range. And this is based on the following assumption, which is called continuum assumptions. And this assumption says that for a given system, uh, if the characteristic time of momentum diffusion is larger than the characteristic time of the molecular motion, then we are safe. So for water, this uh, uh, critical uh, length will be about one nanometer. And generally speaking, if we are looking at uh, if we are looking at a, a broader scale, we found that for a simple surface, in terms of simple surface, so uh, we compare to those surface with structure, okay? And the water on those simple surface, the three plants will be between 0.1 nanometer to tens of nanometers. So we are talking about things happened, or the phenomena happened on nanoscale. And because this is on a nanoscale, 
So it mainly has applications in the following small scale uh, uh, apparatus. For example, the micro, uh, the micro applications, the transport across membrane and oil explorations, and also cheap cooling. And so you can see that in different fields, it all shows great applications. And because sleep flux is very important, there are already many studies about this topic, especially for water on graphene or graphene related surface because it shows very interesting phenomena. And for example, in this paper published on Nature about six years ago, people found a slip loss about 20, 60 nanometers when water flowing through graphite nanochannels. And then later, it will be uh, when water flowing uh, through graphene nan uh, nanochannels, the slip loss reduced to 16 nanometers. And then later, uh, the, uh, 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 a French group and they measured the uh, dependence of the slip lungs uh, on the radius of the common tubes, and they found uh, a very nice uh, uh, decrease when the radius of the tubes increases. And also, not surprisingly, uh, uh, 20 years ago, people measured the slip lungs of water on graphite surface, and with an average slip lungs about a few nanometers. Although there are many studies about this topic, but surprisingly, we found that there is that is uh, the dependence of cyclones for water on the types of uh, supporting substrate and thickness of carbonous layers remains unknown. And this is very important because we know that in practical applications, these graphene layers or few layer graphene must be supported by certain substrates. And usually we are we are interested in few layer graphene because they show exotic behaviors, and so this is why we are interested in this topic. And to this end, we start our own experiment. So the method we use is a very traditional one. It's called colloid probe AFM, and figure A is the schematic of the system. So we have an AFM tip, and with a microsphere attached on the tip, and the whole system is immersed in the liquid, and then there is a substrate, and there is a few layer graphene. So we approaching the uh, sphere uh, to the surface and the retraction, and we, we, we record the force and the velocity, and then we can get figure B. And the figure B, the y-axis is the force exerted on the tip, and the axis is, is a separation between the microsphere and the surface. This is, can be calculated by integrating the velocity see that the raw data. And further on, we do one more step. We convert it to the x-axis x -axis remains separation, but the y-axis will be the ratio between the velocity, the vertical velocity, and the force exerted on the, for, on the, on the AFM tip. And then surprisingly, so what we find will be that if you do the linear fitting, for approaching the, the for the approaching stage, and then do you do extrapolate to the x-axis, and this one, this uh, intersection will be the slip This is straightforward because the y-axis is to the left of the equation, and when this is equal to zero, so I, because Ls must be positive, and is what we are interested in, so H must be negative, and this is the intersection and details can be found in these references. And before we show the measuring uh, results, we want to elaborate more about the characterizations because doing experiments is very important to make sure the system you are measuring is what we are thinking. So this is uh, figure A is uh, uh, the surface of the microsphere. So we are using the inverse scan AFM and this is a typical uh, surface morphology of the sphere. So we can see that within the scale of a few hundred nanometers, the surface of the sphere is very smooth, is about uh, less than 0.1 nanometers. And also the two supporting substrate we are using is silica and OTS. And so we measure the contact angle and uh, to make sure that the one being hydrophilic and the one being hydrophobic, and this also the values agrees with existing reports. 
And the most important surface is the field layer graphene and uh, to this end. So we measured, as shown in figure C, the morphology as well as the uh, chemistry of the surface with uh, optical and AFM and Raman. And with all this together, it shows that within a range of 20 by 20 micrometers, the RMS roughness is very small, and also we found no detectable defects. So now coming to our measuring results. So figure A shows the slip lines versus the approaching uh, velocity for different substrates. That means so the graphene in different layers, either on silica or on OTS. So despite all the details, uh, we find that the, the slip lines is in fact, this is, uh, they are all vertical lines. So that means the uh, horizontal lines, sorry, so that means the slip length is independent of the velocities. And also we measure the slip length for bare silica and bare OTS, and so our measuring results are, agree, are in good agreement with the existing reports. And now come into one of our uh, most important measure, uh, results as shown in figure B here. So in figure B, the x-axis is the number of layers, or we can call it thickness of graphene, and the y-axis will be the slip length. And here, the blue one is for those uh, system where the OTS is covered by field layer graphene, and for the red one is the silica covered by field layer graphene. So first of all, what we see is that for, hydropopic, uh, for, for OTS, the slip lines gradually decreases and somehow saturates with, the, uh, with a number of layers larger than three. And also for the uh, uh, silica, it, the slip lines increases and saturate to the same value. And this value, uh, we measured it and we found that this slip lines is the same or, or it agrees with existing data reported for slip lines of water on HOPG. But here, we are, make sure, we are sure that the surface is very smooth and is of a single crystal line. So by noticing this, oh, sorry, and the dependence of slip lines on the thickness of graphene layers, and here we term it as translucency, and maybe one, several papers already come into, my mind, uh, come into your mind, which is the whiting translucency. We will talk about it later. And the first uh, question will be that, is this translucency caused by the changes in roughness? Um, so in order to answer this question, so we, we took very careful and intensive measurement on the uh, uh, roughness of the surface. And as here, we show some of the key measurement. And from figure A to figure C, it shows the uh, morphology of the graphene with one layer, two layer, or three layer supported on silica. First, just by eyes, because we are using the same legend. So just by eyes, you see that there are negligible uh, qualitative difference. And if you do the quantitative estimations as shown in figure D here, you will notice that the X axis is the thickness of layers and the Y axis are RMS or peak to valley values. They all of them, they does not change with the number of layers. And this is uh, in direct contrast to the slip lines. And also, if you do the Fourier transformations of either of these uh, morphologies, you will find that the peak period, the, the main period is larger than five micrometers with the corresponding magnitude less than one nanometers. And existing theoretical studies already showed that such small roughness will not introduce errors in the environment. So as a conclusion, so we can say that the slip lines translucency is not caused by the change in roughness. So since roughness is not caused, so what are the possible reasons? And to this end, we noticed that about 10 years ago, there are many studies about wetting translucency for water on field layer graphene, and that was found due to the adhesion energy. And to this end, we borrow their concept. If we can assume that the interaction between liquid and solid 
are additive and the friction follows the green cooper relation, then we can relate the slip lines to the adhesion energy. And also, if uh, we further assume that the density of water along the Z direction follow the Boltzmann distributions, then we can calculate these quantities here. And here, this figure shows our results, calculation results. So here, the, so again, the x-axis is thickness, y-axis is the, uh, is the slip length, and the black data is from our experiment, and the uh, red data is from the, our theory. And I want to emphasize here that we only have one fitting parameter here, which is kappa, and uh, on, one and only one fitting parameters. So we, we can see that this uh, good agreement shows that uh, the translucency of slip lines shares the same mechanisms as that of contact angle, which is due to the translucency of adhesion energy, um, which is very good because we got uh, a reasonable explanation for our observations. But then another question is that is slip lines decided by the contact angle only? Because here it seems that it shares the same mechanisms for the translucency. And to this end, we notice that when you consider the slip loss, uh, its dependence on temperature, you find something very interesting. So figure A is a theoretical study shows that for hydrophobic surface, the slip loss decreases as the temperature increases, and for hydrophilic, it increases. However, later, a theoretic, another theoretical studies found just the opposite directions where slip lines increases for hydrophobic surface. So they are in direct contradiction. And what is more interesting is that later, uh, recently a paper published on another scale already also showed that some, sometimes if you're considering, also this is a theoretical paper, considering the slip lines for water on hydropho hydrophilic and hydrophobic surface, they can show the same trend. So what all these studies shows that is there is uh, the temperature dependence of slip lines is controversial and without any explanations. And to understand this, first of all, we also carried our own environments, and this is our results. So we found that for water slip on two layer uh, graphene supported by silica, the slip lines always decreases. Doesn't matter of the uh, velocities and but meanwhile we also noticed that existing literatures reported that the contact angle is independent of temperature when the temperature is below in the boiling point which is the case for our systems so that means the dependence of slip lines and contact angle on temperature should share different mechanisms and so in other words uh, the slip lines does not depend on the contact angle only. And in order to understand this, so because slip lines and temperature are independent, so we use the energy barrier. So, and here we are very familiar with this uh, 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 theory proposed by Lederich Bouquet, and he was able to link these slip lines to the energy barrier for the water molecule sliding on the uh, solid surface, and this is very nice one. And further, we notice if you use the theory from Mike Lawson, which is uh, half a decade ago, you can further relate the energy barrier to the following quantum quantities. And with all these tedious calculations, in the end, you will be able to derive such an equation. This equation shows that the three plans is proportional to this ratio, which is a pre-coefficient. And what is the most important is that all these five quantities in this uh, part, they can be calculated separately and uh, independently. And with all this, in this figure, we compare our experimental value, the black dots, to our theoretical predictions with only one fitting parameter, which is the uh, pre-coefficient pre, uh, pre kappa t here. And we can see that somehow we get a reasonable agreement. However, this is good, but also one problem. 
because here we only found a negative correlation between sleep length and temperature. And I already showed that existing theoretical studies show that, uh, show that sometimes it can be positive. So could the positive relation be observed in experiments? And because uh, the uh, indication shows that this somehow has, has, to, has something to do with the wetting properties, so we further measure the dependence of the sleep lungs for water on FDTS. And this is a hydrophobic surface with a contact angle about 115. And here, if you we first found the same uh, decreased tendency uh, for, uh, for the sleep lungs versus temperature. But interestingly is that if we are using uh, solutions instead of water, the solution we use is sodium chloride. And then at smaller concentration, this is uh, negative. But at a larger concentration, this becomes positive. So this is interesting. And this can be further clearly seen if you plot in this way. So x-axis x is inverse temperature, and the y-axis is a logarithm uh, log, uh, ln ls. And in this case, first of all, you see a very clear trend where they follow linear dependence. And this is a very strong indication shows that this sleep is a read process. Because this is a read process, so we can use the very famous uh, uh, read process theory. And, and for this theory, generally it tells a very, very simple thing for our system that say, uh, that is to say for liquid molecule moving along solid surface, the molecule needs to cross energy barrier as shown in this schematic. And with the trivial derivations, you will be able to, uh, to, to link the sleep lungs to these quantities. So in this batch of quantities, so these all S terms, there are the partition functions under different conditions. And these four terms, there are the system, pro system properties. What is important is these two energy barriers and this E zero will be this barrier. That is the barrier the molecules needs to cross over when it slides on the solid surface at zero K. And this E zero L is the energy barrier for a single molecule a liquid molecule moving inside bulk liquid at zero K. And uh, with this, you, we can further write it in this form, and which is seems to be very simple, uh, uh, sim uh, sim to, to be simpler. And with these uh, equations, we can do fitting, right? And so this is the figure we already show. And if we use this equation and fit into this uh, data set, shows a very nice uh, linear dependence, and we can get the value of the difference between the two energy barriers. And with similar derivations, it will be trivial to show that for the friction coefficient between liquid and solid, it, also, uh, it is also a read process and it follows these relations. And then this is our experimental data. And by doing the fitting, you can extract the values for E0, which is the energy barrier to the uh, water molecule sliding uh, across the uh, graphene surface, uh, the, the solid surface. And with this two, and then you can calculate, you, you can calculate E0, and the E0 is already a tablet values because it's for bulk liquid. And what we found that is if we compare with the tablet values and the relative error for the estimated E0 is less than 20%. And somehow this is a good indication to show the validity of our theoretical explanations. And so all this just tells one simple thing, which is the monotosity of the dependence for the cyclones on temperature is determined just by the difference between two energy barriers. And to understand this, uh, uh, this, this uh, theory on molecular scale, to provide an atomic picture, we also perform full atomic MD simulations as shown in figure A here. So here you have the silica surface, you have FDTS, and these are the solutions, sodium chloride, and by doing the, conducting it with an, uh, with an MNT ensemble, we can get the 
uh, equilibrium, config, uh, equilibrium configurations, and you can do the statistics. And by doing very nice statistics uh, for the energy barriers uh, at, uh, for the, with the concentrations being zero, uh, being 0.1 molar, and being one molar, and you can estimate the delta E also from uh, MD simulations, and as showing figure D here. So in figure D, the x-axis is the concentration of the solution. The y-axis is the energy barrier, E0. This is the experiment, and this is uh, from directly calculated from our MD simulations. Somehow, we got a reasonable agreement between the experiment and uh, MD simulations. Uh, also, validating that the atomic picture we have in mind which is inspired by the theory uh, should host. Uh, with all this together, so we can get an overall picture about the dependence of the temp uh, of cyclons on temperature. So the key, the variable we have is the concentration of the solution. So when the solution of the uh, when the concentration increases, so first the concentration of absorbed ions on the solid surface increases. And this will increase the energy barrier, E0. And meanwhile, when the concentration increases in our range studies, the viscosity almost remains constant. And this indicates that this E0L almost remains constant. And then that is to say, for this difference, this term is a constant, and this term is increasing as the concentration increasing. So the sign of this difference then will gradually changes from positive to negative. And then with the theory we show above, this dependence, the monotonicity will change from minus to positive, a positive, very simple uh, understanding. So with all this, I would like to give a summary of our work. So first, our results provide the first set of experimental reference values for the sleep lines of water on supported fuel layer graphene. And second, um, we found translucency for the sleep lines of water on supported graphene for the system above. And also, we show that the controversy for the dependence of sleep lines of water on temperature can be understood by the read process, where the difference between two energy barriers is the key. And the last uh, is that the quant key quantity is zero because this is a kinetic, uh, ki kinetic process and the energy barrier is very important. And this one can be estimated by measuring the dependence of sleep lines on temperature. And in the future, we are interested in the three following three aspects. The first is the quantitative relation between energy barrier and concentration of the solution. And second is to apply the method to other systems or for other uh, for various uh, solids and uh, solutions. Last but not least, the to establishing connections to fields such as super diversity and nanopolitics. And also, for example, recently the very very interesting quantum friction between uh, water and uh, fuel layer and, and the fuel layer graphene. And with all this, I would like to thank you all. Thanks for your listening and thanks for your patience. And welcome any questions. Thank you very much, Ming. It is open for questions, remarks. Fine. Uh, please, Mingmar, there are some online questions. Can you see the chatting room? This was just asking. Yes, this is, is a physical? very yeah. Yeah. fundamental question. So it's uh, the physical <laughs> meaning of the <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Sorry, I, th I think you actually explained quite clearly what the slip length was in the very first slide. So I guess uh, whoever it was was distracted at that time. <laughs> Any other question? We seem to have no no questions, uh, no further questions. Okay. So I, I, I think we we thank uh, Professor Ma again. Thank you.